Would you like free audiobooks? Click the link in the description. Question 1. A nurse is caring for a client diagnosed with iron deficiency anemia. Which dietary advice should the nurse provide to help increase the client's iron intake? A. Increase consumption of dairy products. B. Consume more citrus fruits. C. Include more red meat, beans, and leafy green vegetables in the diet. D. Focus on a high-fiber diet. Correct answer. C. Rationale, iron deficiency anemia is treated by increasing dietary iron intake. Red meat, beans, and leafy green vegetables are rich sources of iron. Citrus fruits, option B, help in iron absorption but are not high in iron themselves. Dairy products, option A, and a high-fiber diet, option D, are not primary sources of iron and can actually inhibit iron absorption. Question 2. A client with a history of chronic kidney disease is scheduled for a routine hemodialysis session. The nurse understands that this client is at risk for which hematologic disorder? A. Polycythemia. B. Hemophilia. C. Anemia. D. Thrombocytopenia. Correct answer. C. Rationale. Chronic kidney disease can lead to decreased erythropoietin production, causing anemia. Polycythemia, option A, is an increased volume of red blood cells, not typically associated with kidney disease. Hemophilia, option B, is a genetic clotting disorder, and thrombocytopenia, option D, refers to a low platelet count, neither of which are directly linked to kidney disease and its impact on erythropoietin. Question 3. A nurse is educating a client about managing sickle cell disease. Which statement by the client indicates a need for further education? A. I should stay hydrated, especially during exercise. B. It's best for me to avoid high altitudes. C. I can manage my pain with over-the-counter NSAIDs alone. D. I need to get vaccinated to prevent infections. Correct answer. C. Rationale, sickle cell disease often requires comprehensive pain management strategies, including prescription medications, due to the severity of pain episodes. Over-the-counter NSAIDs may not be sufficient for managing the pain associated with sickle cell crises. Staying hydrated, option A, avoiding high altitudes, option B, and getting vaccinated, option D, are all appropriate management strategies for sickle cell disease. Question 4. Which laboratory finding is most indicative of acute lymphocytic leukemia, ALL? A. Elevated white blood cell count with a predominance of lymphoblasts. B. Decreased red blood cell count. C. Increased platelets. D. Low neutrophil count. Correct answer. A. Rationale, acute lymphocytic leukemia is characterized by the overproduction of immature lymphocytes, called lymphoblasts, leading to an elevated white blood cell count with a predominance of these cells. Decreased red blood cell count, option B, may be a finding in ALL due to marrow infiltration, but it's not as specific as option A. Increased platelets, option C, are not characteristic of ALL, and a low neutrophil count, option D could be a result of the disease, but is not as indicative as a high count of lymphoblasts. Question 5. A nurse is reviewing the lab results of a client with suspected disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC. Which lab finding would support this diagnosis? A. Elevated fibrinogen levels. B. Decreased D-dimer. C. Prolonged prothrombin time, PT. D. Increased platelet count. Correct answer. C. Rationale. DIC is characterized by widespread coagulation throughout the body, leading to the consumption of clotting factors and platelets. This results in prolonged PT due to the depletion of clotting factors. Elevated fibrinogen levels, option A, and increased platelet count, option D, are not indicative of DIC. 
Decreased D-dimer, option B, would be unusual in DIC, as D-dimer levels typically increase due to the breakdown of fibrin clots. Question 6. The nurse is caring for a client with a platelet count of 50,000. Which intervention is most appropriate for this client? A. Prepare for immediate platelet transfusion. B. Implement bleeding precautions. C. Encourage participation in contact sports for exercise. D. Administer aspirin for pain relief. Correct answer, B. Rationale, a platelet count of 50,000 is low and increases the risk of bleeding. The most appropriate intervention is to implement bleeding precautions to minimize the risk of bleeding. This includes using a soft toothbrush, avoiding invasive procedures when possible, and preventing falls. Preparing for immediate platelet transfusion, option A, might not be necessary unless the client shows signs of significant bleeding or has an even lower platelet count. Encouraging participation in contact sports, option C, is contraindicated due to the increased risk of bleeding with low platelet counts. Administering aspirin, option D, is inappropriate as aspirin inhibits platelet function, further increasing the risk of bleeding in a client with thrombocytopenia. Question 7. A client presents with fatigue, pallor, and a sore tongue. Laboratory tests reveal macrocytic anemia. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? A. Iron deficiency anemia. B. Thalassemia. C. Vitamin B12 deficiency. D. Acute blood loss. Correct answer, C. Rationale, the symptoms and macrocytic, large cell, anemia are indicative of a vitamin B12 deficiency, which can lead to megaloblastic anemia. Fatigue, pallor, and a sore tongue are common signs. Iron deficiency anemia, option A, typically presents with microcytic, small cell, anemia. Thalassemia, option B, also leads to microcytic anemia and is usually identified through genetic testing. Acute blood loss, option D, causes normocytic, normal cell size, anemia. Question 8. A nurse is educating a client on warfarin therapy. Which food item should the client be instructed to avoid due to its potential to interfere with the medication's effectiveness? A. Bananas. B. Spinach. C. White rice. D. Chicken breast. Correct answer, B. Rationale, spinach is high in vitamin K, which can interfere with the effectiveness of warfarin, a medication used to prevent blood clots by inhibiting vitamin K-dependent clotting factors. Clients should be advised to maintain a consistent intake of vitamin K and avoid sudden increases in dietary vitamin K. Bananas, option A, white rice, option C, and chicken breast, option D do not contain significant amounts of vitamin K and therefore have less potential to interfere with warfarin therapy. Question 9. Which assessment finding in a client with hemophilia A would require immediate nursing intervention? A. Joint discomfort. B. Presence of a petechial rash. C. Blood in the urine. D. Prolonged nosebleed. Correct answer, C. Rationale, blood in the urine, hematuria, requires immediate nursing intervention in a client with hemophilia A, as it indicates a potentially serious bleeding event that could lead to further complications. Joint discomfort, option A, is common in hemophilia due to bleeding into joints, but it does not require immediate intervention compared to hematuria. A petechial rash, option B, could indicate a platelet issue, which is less common in hemophilia. Prolonged nosebleeds, option D, are concerning but not as immediately life-threatening as hematuria. Question 10. A nurse is planning care for a client with thrombocytopenia. Which of the following nursing interventions is most appropriate to include in the plan of care? A. Encourage aerobic exercise daily. B. Use a lift sheet to reposition the client in bed. C. Administer intramuscular injections as needed for medication. D. 
Encourage the use of a straight razor for shaving. Correct answer, B. Rationale, using a lift sheet to reposition the client in bed minimizes the risk of skin tears and bruising, which is particularly important for a client with thrombocytopenia, who is at increased risk for bleeding. Aerobic exercise, option A should be approached with caution in clients with thrombocytopenia due to the risk of injury. Intramuscular injections, option C, are avoided if possible due to the increased risk of bleeding. Encouraging the use of a straight razor, option D, for shaving is contraindicated, an electric razor should be used to reduce the risk of cuts. Question 11. The nurse is caring for a client with polycythemia vera. Which symptom should the nurse prioritize for immediate intervention? A. Headache. B. Itching after a hot shower. C. Reddened face. D. Dizziness. Correct answer, D. Rationale, dizziness in a client with polycythemia vera may indicate increased blood viscosity, leading to decreased cerebral perfusion and requires immediate intervention to prevent complications like stroke. Headache, option A, itching after a hot shower, option B, and a reddened face, option C, are common symptoms associated with polycythemia vera due to increased red blood cell mass and blood viscosity, but they do not typically require immediate intervention as does dizziness, which could signify a more severe underlying problem. Question 12. A client is receiving a transfusion of packed red blood cells. Which of the following signs would indicate an acute hemolytic reaction that necessitates the nurse to stop the transfusion immediately? A. Hypotension. B. Bradycardia. C. Flushing. D. Back pain. Correct answer, D. Rationale. Back pain during a blood transfusion is a classic sign of an acute hemolytic reaction, which is a medical emergency. This reaction occurs when the transfused blood is not compatible with the client's blood type, leading to destruction of the red blood cells. Hypotension, option A, and flushing, option C, may also occur with this type of reaction, but back pain is a more specific and early indicator. Bradycardia, option B, is less commonly associated with acute hemolytic reactions. Question 13. A nurse is educating a client with a history of deep vein thrombosis, DVT, on the importance of prophylactic anticoagulation therapy. Which statement by the client indicates a need for further education? A. I should wear compression stockings during long flights. B. I'll need to have my blood drawn regularly to check the medication's effect. C. If I notice any unusual bleeding, I should stop taking the medication immediately. D. It's important to avoid foods high in vitamin K. Correct answer, C. Rationale, telling the client to stop taking anticoagulation medication immediately if they notice unusual bleeding indicates a misunderstanding. While it's important to report unusual bleeding to a healthcare provider, clients should not stop taking their medication without professional advice due to the risk of clot formation. Wearing compression stockings, option A, and monitoring medication effects through blood tests, option B, are appropriate measures. Avoiding foods high in vitamin K, option D, is important for clients on certain anticoagulants, like warfarin. Question 14. The nurse is monitoring a client for signs of neutropenia. Which clinical manifestation would be most concerning? A. Fatigue. B. Elevated temperature. C. Hypertension. D. Muscle aches. Correct answer, B. Rationale, an elevated temperature in a client with neutropenia is concerning because it can indicate an infection to which these clients are highly susceptible due to their reduced neutrophil count. Neutropenia compromises the body's ability to fight infections, making even a slight fever potentially serious. Fatigue, option A, hypertension, option C, and muscle aches, option D, are less specific to neutropenia and do not indicate an infection as directly as an elevated temperature does. Question 15. A client with a diagnosis of aplastic anemia is at increased risk for 
A. Polycythemia. B. Infections. C. Hemochromatosis. D. Hypercoagulability. Correct answer, B. Rationale, clients with aplastic anemia are at increased risk for infections due to the disease's impact on bone marrow, leading to decreased production of white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. This decreased white blood cell production compromises the immune system. Polycythemia, option A, is an increase in red blood cell volume, which is opposite of what occurs in aplastic anemia. Hemochromatosis, option C, is an iron overload condition, not directly related to aplastic anemia. Hypercoagulability, option D, refers to increased blood clotting, which is also not directly related to the risks associated with aplastic anemia. Question 16. A nurse is caring for a client who just received a diagnosis of chronic myeloid leukemia, CML. The client asks about the progression of the disease. The nurse's response should be based on the understanding that CML a. rapidly progresses without treatment, leading to acute leukemia phases. b. is always fatal within months, even with treatment. c. typically has a slow progression and can be managed with targeted therapy. d. is curable with bone marrow transplantation in all cases. Correct answer, c. Rationale, chronic myeloid leukemia, CML, generally has a slow progression and can often be effectively managed with targeted therapy, such as tyrosine kinase inhibitors, which specifically target the abnormal protein produced by the Philadelphia chromosome present in most cases of CML. This can lead to long periods of remission and a manageable quality of life. Rapid progression without treatment, option A, can occur but is not inevitable with current therapies. The statement that CML is always fatal within months, even with treatment, option B, is incorrect. While bone marrow transplantation, option D, can offer a cure for some cases, it is not guaranteed to cure all cases of CML. Question 17. When providing care for a client with von Willebrand disease, the nurse should prioritize a. Preventing exposure to infectious agents. b. Monitoring for signs of deep vein thrombosis. C. Observing for signs of bleeding and bruising. D. Avoiding high altitudes. Correct answer, C. Rationale, von Willebrand disease is a hereditary bleeding disorder caused by a deficiency or dysfunction of von Willebrand factor, which helps platelets to clot and blood vessels to heal. The nurse should prioritize observing for signs of bleeding and bruising as these are common issues for clients with this condition. Preventing exposure to infectious agents, option A, is important for all clients, but not specific to the care of someone with von Willebrand disease. Monitoring for signs of deep vein thrombosis, option B, and avoiding high altitudes, option D, are not directly related to the primary concerns associated with von Willebrand disease. Question 18. A client admitted with anemia begins to show signs of heart failure. The nurse understands that this complication is most likely due to a. Increased blood viscosity b. Overproduction of red blood cells c. Increased demand on the heart to supply oxygen d. Direct damage to the heart muscle by excess iron Correct answer, c. Rationale in clients with anemia, the reduced number of red blood cells leads to decreased oxygen-carrying capacity of the blood. This condition forces the heart to work harder to supply adequate oxygen to the body's tissues, which can lead to heart failure over time due to the increased cardiac workload. Increased blood viscosity, option A, and overproduction of red blood cells, option B, are not typical complications of anemia, but are seen in conditions like polycythemia. Direct damage to the heart muscle, by excess iron, option D, may occur in conditions like hemochromatosis, not typically in anemia. Question 19. A nurse is providing discharge instructions to a client who had a splenectomy, following a traumatic injury. The nurse should emphasize the importance of a. Regularly scheduled anticoagulant therapy. 
b. Lifelong pneumococcal and meningococcal vaccinations. c. Avoiding contact sports to prevent liver damage. d. Daily iron supplementation. Correct answer, b. Rationale, clients who have had a splenectomy are at increased risk for infections, particularly from encapsulated bacteria such as pneumococcus and meningococcus. Lifelong vaccinations against these organisms are recommended to prevent serious infections. Anticoagulant therapy, option A, is not routinely required following a splenectomy unless the client has another condition necessitating its use. Avoiding contact sports, option C, is advised immediately post-surgery to prevent injury to the surgical site, but the primary long-term concern is not liver damage. Daily iron supplementation, option D, is not routinely recommended unless the client has a specific condition that causes iron deficiency. Question 20. The nurse is caring for a client with multiple myeloma. Which symptoms should the nurse report immediately to the healthcare provider? A. Fatigue. B. Bone pain. C. Constipation. D. Increased thirst and urination. Correct answer, D. Rationale, increased thirst and urination can indicate hypercalcemia, a common complication of multiple myeloma due to bone destruction and release of calcium into the bloodstream. Hypercalcemia requires immediate medical intervention to prevent serious complications such as kidney failure. Fatigue, option A, and bone pain, option B, are common symptoms of multiple myeloma but do not typically require urgent intervention. Constipation, option C, can be a side effect of the medications used to treat multiple myeloma or due to hypercalcemia, but it is not as immediately concerning as the symptoms of hypercalcemia. Question 21. A client diagnosed with hemochromatosis is receiving education on managing the condition. The nurse should advise the client to a. Increase intake of vitamin C to enhance iron absorption. b. Avoid alcohol to reduce the risk of liver damage. c. Consume iron supplements to maintain normal iron levels. d. Limit fluid intake to prevent fluid overload. Correct answer, b. Rationale. Clients with hemochromatosis, a condition characterized by excessive iron accumulation in the body, should avoid alcohol to reduce the risk of liver damage, as alcohol can exacerbate liver problems. Increasing vitamin C intake, option A, is not recommended because vitamin C enhances iron absorption, which is undesirable in hemochromatosis. Consuming iron supplements, option C, is contraindicated for the same reason. Limiting fluid intake, option D, is not specifically related to managing hemochromatosis, but may be relevant in other conditions like heart or kidney failure. Question 22. During an assessment, the nurse notes that a client has pallor, jaundice, and an enlarged spleen. These findings are most consistent with which hematologic disorder? A. Hemophilia. B. Sickle cell anemia. C. Vitamin B12 deficiency. D. Deep vein thrombosis. Correct answer, B. Rationale, pallor, jaundice, and an enlarged spleen, splenomegaly, are findings consistent with sickle cell anemia. These symptoms result from the sickling of red blood cells, which leads to hemolysis, breaking down of red blood cells, causing jaundice, and can cause splenomegaly due to the spleen working overtime to filter the abnormal cells. Hemophilia, option A, is a bleeding disorder and does not typically cause these symptoms. Vitamin B12 deficiency, option C, leads to megaloblastic anemia with different symptoms, primarily affecting the nervous system and red blood cell production. Deep vein thrombosis, option D, involves blood clots in the veins and does not cause these hematologic symptoms. Question 23. A nurse is planning care for a client with a high risk of bleeding due to a low platelet count. Which action is most appropriate to include in the client's care plan? A. Administer aspirin as needed for pain or fever. B. Use a soft bristled toothbrush and avoid flossing. 
C. Encourage the client to increase physical activity. D. Schedule regular therapeutic phlebotomies. Correct answer, B. Rationale, using a soft bristled toothbrush and avoiding flossing can help prevent bleeding in the gums, which is important for a client with a low platelet count and a high risk of bleeding. Aspirin, option A, should be avoided because it inhibits platelet function, increasing the risk of bleeding. Encouraging the client to increase physical activity, option C, should be done with caution due to the risk of injury and subsequent bleeding. Therapeutic phlebotomies, option D, are used to treat conditions with excess iron or red blood cells, not for managing low platelet counts. Question 24. The nurse is providing education to a client with a recent diagnosis of essential thrombocythemia. Which statement by the client indicates an understanding of the condition? A. I understand that this condition means I have a lower risk of blood clots. B. I should expect frequent episodes of bleeding and bruising. C. My condition involves an overproduction of platelets, which can lead to clotting issues. D. I will need to have my spleen removed as soon as possible. Correct answer, C. Rationale, essential thrombocythemia is a disorder characterized by the overproduction of platelets, which can lead to an increased risk of blood clotting, not bleeding. The client's statement that the condition involves an overproduction of platelets and can lead to clotting issues, option C, indicates an accurate understanding of the condition. The belief that there is a lower risk of blood clots, option A, or expecting frequent episodes of bleeding and bruising, option B, reflects a misunderstanding of the condition. Spleen removal, option D, is not a standard treatment for essential thrombocythemia. Question 25. A nurse is caring for a client who is scheduled to undergo a bone marrow biopsy. The client expresses anxiety about the procedure. Which response by the nurse is most appropriate? A. Don't worry, the procedure is quick and you won't feel a thing. B. It's normal to feel anxious, but we'll provide pain medication and support throughout. C. You should try to relax, anxiety can make the pain worse. D. Why are you anxious? The procedure is very safe. Correct answer, B. Rationale, acknowledging the client's feelings and reassuring them that pain medication and support will be provided, option B, is the most appropriate response. It validates the client's feelings and provides information on how their comfort and anxiety will be managed. Telling the client not to worry, option A, or to relax, option C, minimizes their feelings and may not be reassuring. Questioning why they are anxious, option D, could make the client feel judged and is not helpful in alleviating their concerns. Visit nursestudy.net for more nursing practice exams, care plans, and study guides.